Hello, everybody. Welcome again to Storytime from the Milledgeville Public Library of Illinois. The story we have for you today comes from the Ukraine, and it's a story about a young man who found some very interesting friends and how they helped him win the hand of a princess. This is the story of the fool of the world and the flying ship. Once upon a time, oh, so very long ago, the Tsar sent out his messengers far and wide. For you see, his daughter, the Tsarevna, she was of an age to get married. But the Tsar wanted to make sure that whoever married her was definitely worthy of her. And so he decided that whoever married the Tsarevna would have to bring him a great treasure. In fact, they would have to bring him something that the Tsar had only read about in books, and he really wanted one for himself. He wanted a flying ship. A ship just like one that would sail on the ocean, but this one would fly through the air instead of sailing through the water. Well, it seemed impossible to everyone that such a thing could exist, but many young princes tried and failed to build a flying ship. And all over Russia and all around Russia, in the Ukraine, in Romania, in Germany even, people tried to figure out how to build a flying ship so that they could marry the Tsarevna and become Tsar eventually themselves. But no one ever managed it. In one village, there was a very quiet young man. He didn't say very much. And so everyone in the village called him the fool of the world for the thought that since he didn't say anything, there must not be anything in his head worth talking about. He heard about the Tsar's declaration that he was going to build a flying ship, that, that he wanted the flying ship, and whoever brought him a flying ship could marry the Tsarevna. And so this young man declared that he would go to the palace and take the Tsar that flying ship. Everyone in the village laughed at him, for of course they all thought he was quite stupid. But he decided that he was going to go anyway. And so his mother, although she wasn't so sure this was a wise thing for her son to do, she supported him anyway. She packed him bread and water for his journey, and he thanked her, and he set off down the road. Now, he had not gone very far down the road towards wherever he was going to find the flying ship when he met an old man. And the old man said to him, where are you going? And he said, well, I'm going to find a flying ship. Where are you going to find such a strange ship? Well, I don't know yet, said the fool. Have you got any ideas? Oh, other men have passed this way to try to find a flying ship, but none of them would stop and talk with me. You are very kind for doing so, so I think I will help you. But before we do anything else, I'm very hungry. Have you any food that we could share? Oh, I do not have much, said the fool of the world, but whatever I do have, you are more than welcome to share with me. Look in your bag and let us see what is there, said the old man. When the fool of the world opened the bag, he was very surprised, for he knew that his mother had only put a few loaves of black bread in there and a bottle of water. But instead, in his bag, there was meat and there was cheese and there was fine white bread. And when he opened the bottle, it wasn't water inside. It was the finest wine. Well, very happily, he sat down and shared his food with the old man. The old man said to him, now that you have been so kind as to share your lunch with me, I will give you some instructions and they will help you to find the flying ship. Do you see that wood over there? Go into that wood, and the first big tree you find, strike it with a stick three times. One, two, three. Then you will fall asleep, and when you wake up, 
you will find a flying ship. Well, the fool thought that was rather an odd set of instructions, but he didn't know where to find a flying ship, and this old man certainly seemed to think so. And so he thanked the old man kindly, and he set off toward the wood. When he got there, he picked up a stick from the ground, and he wandered about looking for a big tree. And when he found a big tree, the very first one he saw, he walked up to it, and he, he thought for a moment, and he, now the old man said to hit this tree three times. One, two, three. He set his stick down on the ground, and he got very tired, and so he lay down, and he fell asleep. Well, he slept all afternoon and all night long, and when he woke up, it was morning. And there beside him, floating just above the ground, was a beautiful flying ship. Well, the fool was quite surprised, but the old man had told him he would find the ship if he did what he said. And so he picked up his bag and he climbed aboard the ship and it rose slowly into the air, and it hovered there. And the fool said, I would like to go to the Tsar's palace, please. And the ship began to fly across the land. It was silent as it flew through the air, although the people below saw the shadow pass. But before long, the fool saw a man kneeling on the road, and he had his ear down to the ground. And he was listening? to the dirt. And so the fool called to the ship, stop, stop. And he called out to the man and he said, what are you doing? For he looked rather odd. And the man looked up and he said, I am listening to everything that is being said around the world. Oh, said the fool of the world. Well, if you can do something like that, you are sure to hear something interesting where I am going to. I am going to the Tsar. Would you like to come with me? There must be many, many interesting things to hear in the palace. Oh, I can hear all of those things from here, said the man. But I would like to see the palace. And so here all climbed aboard the ship and off they sailed. After they had gone a little bit further, they came upon a man who was hopping down the road. He had one of his feet tied up. And, and, and it was tied up around his waist so that he couldn't put it down on the ground and he was just hopping along the road. Well, he looked so very odd that the fool of the world told the ship to stop again and he called down and he said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going down the road. Why, why don't you use both legs? And the man said, well, if I did that, then I should be across the world in one step. Oh, said the fool of the world, well now, that sounds like a very useful skill. We're going to see the Tsar. Perhaps he could give you a job as a messenger. Would you like to come along with us? And Stridefar said, yes, I should. And he climbed aboard the ship. Off they sailed again. And as they were sailing along, they saw a man standing out in a field with a bow and an arrow. And they watched to see if he was going to hit his target. But then they realized they couldn't see his target. And the man picked up the bow and he pulled it back. And he shot the arrow and it flew off and they couldn't see where it went. And so they stopped and they called down to him. Um, what are you shooting at? And he said, oh, I am shooting at a target that is 300 kilometers away. Oh, can you see that? Really? And he said, oh, yes, I can. And the fool of the world said, hmm, I think this could be a very useful skill. We are going to see the Tsar. Would you like to come with us? Perhaps with eyesight like that, he would like to hire you to keep watch over his kingdom. Well, said Sharp Eyes, I think I should like to come with you. Thank you very kindly. 
and he climbed aboard the ship and off they sailed. Now as they were sailing along the road, starting to think perhaps about some supper, they saw a man carrying an enormous sack. And they wondered what was in the sack. And as they got closer, they could see sticking out of the top of the sack loaves of bread. And so they sailed over and they said, hello, could we buy one of your loaves of bread? And the man said, oh, oh, I'm afraid not. For you see, this is my snack. I'm in search of dinner. A snack, they said. That is just a snack. Come with us to the palace. We're going to see the Tsar, said the fool of the world. I am certain that he will have plenty of bread that you can eat. And so hungry eater said that he would come along. And he climbed aboard the ship and off they sailed. As they sailed along a little further, they saw a man in a lake. And he was walking about on the edge of the lake, wandering around as though he was looking for something. And so they sailed closer and they called out and they asked him what he was looking for. And he said he was looking for a drink. Well, that was a bit odd for he was standing in a lake. And so the fool of the world said to him, you're standing in a lake and you're looking for a drink? And the man said, oh, but you see, this lake is just a sip to me. I want a real drink. Oh, said the fool of the world. Well, now we are going to see the Tsar and I am certain that he will have enough for you to drink. Won't you come along with us? And thirsty drinker thought about it for a moment. And then he decided that he would like to go to see the Tsar and perhaps the Tsar would have enough for him to drink. And so he climbed aboard the ship and off they sailed. As they were sailing along, they passed over a wood. And as they came over the, the field next to the woods, they noticed that there was a man below them with a big bundle of firewood on his back. But then they realized he was going the wrong direction. Most people came out of the woods with a big bundle of firewood on their back. This man was going into the woods. And so they sailed down and they asked him what on earth he was doing, for this was very strange behavior. The man said to them, well, you see, this is a very special bundle of wood. If I take this wood into a forest and I scatter the sticks about, it becomes a whole army of soldiers. Oh, said the fool of the world, now an army of soldiers like that would be very useful to the Tsar. We're going to his palace. Won't you come along with us? And so Wood Carrier said that he thought that might sound like fun. And he climbed aboard the ship and sailed off with them. Well, they were getting a bit closer to the palace now. The houses were getting a little closer together and there were more and more villages. But between two of the villages, they saw a man walking down the road, carrying an enormous, bundle of straw. He was almost hidden underneath it. And they sailed down to him and they asked him where he was going with that very large bundle of straw. And he said, well, I'm looking for somewhere safe to store it. For you see, if I scatter this bundle of straw about everywhere that it falls, there will be snow and frost all over the ground. Well, that could be very useful to the Tsar, thought the fool of the world. And so he invited Straw, straw Carrier to climb aboard the ship and come with them to see the Tsar. Before too much longer, they sailed into St. Petersburg. And there was the Tsar's palace, huge and beautiful. And they sailed up to the palace. And the guards saw them coming and they raised the alarm. And the Tsar heard inside the palace that someone had come with the flying ship. Oh, he was so excited. He sent for his counselors and he sent them out to find out what prince had come on the flying ship. Well, when the counselors got out to the, the ship, they found that there was not a prince on board. In fact, there was a peasant in charge of the ship and he had brought a lot of his friends with him and very odd friends they seemed indeed. So they went back and they told the Tsar 
and the Tsar was rather angry that a mere peasant had come to marry his daughter, the Tsarevna. A peasant could not be good enough for her. He must do something about this. Hmm, let me think. I know. Tell the peasant he must bring me a jar of water from the well of happiness. It is on the other side of the world. He will never get there. Oh, and just in case, tell him I want it before dinner time. Oh, well, here all out in the ship, here all had heard everything that the Tsar had said, and he told it to the fool. And the fool said, oh no, I will barely make it to the palace gate before dinner, much less to the far end of the world. But Stridefar said to him, do not worry, my friend. Tell the Tsar's messenger that you will do what he asked. And as soon as the Tsar's messenger had gone, Stridefar untied his leg from where it was tied round his waist. And he took three steps and he was at the far end of the world. And he took the jar and he filled it up from the well of happiness. But that long walk and all of the fun laughing and talking with all of the others in the ship, it had tired him out a little bit. And so he lay down to take just a little nap. He wouldn't take him long. He could easily be back before dinner time. But sometimes when you lay down to take just a little nap, you end up taking a big nap. And it was getting closer and closer to dinner time, and Stridefar still had not come back. And the fool was getting very worried. And Sharp Eyes looked out across the world and he said, Uh, I think I see him. He looks like he's sitting by the well. I, I hope nothing's happened to him. And here all listened. No, no, nothing has happened to him. I can hear him snoring. He's fallen asleep. And Sharp Eyes said, Oh, this is not a problem, my friends. I will take care of this. And he drew out his bow and his arrows and he pulled back the arrow and he shot the arrow all the way across the world into the well. And when the arrow went splash into the well, the splash threw the water up and it fell on stride far and whew, he woke up and very quickly he walked back across the world and he handed the jar of water to the fool and the fool took it to the king's messengers and they brought it to him just before dinner. Well, the Tsar was not happy that the peasant had managed to bring him the jar of water from the well of happiness before dinner time. And so he decided that he needed to come up with another test. And certainly this time, the peasant would not be able to get out of this one. And so he asked, told the peasant, he told his messengers to tell the peasant that he had to prove that he had the appetite of a prince. He and his companions must all eat 20 roasted oxen and 40 ovens full of bread. Well, the fool was rather surprised when he heard that. He couldn't even eat a full loaf of bread, much less 40 ovens worth. And there was no way he could eat even half of an ox in not 20 of them. But Hungry Eater said, oh, no, no, not a problem, my friends. Let them bring the food. And when they brought the food, Hungry Eater waited until all of the others had eaten. And then he began to eat. And when he was done eating, all that was left were the bones of the roast ox and the empty ovens. And he wiped his face and he said, you would think at the Tsar's palace that you could get a very good meal. This was just a beginning. Well, the Tsar was not happy to find out that the 20 roasted oxen and the 40 ovens of bread were empty, gone, eaten. I must come up with something better. He must prove that he has the, the thirst, the ability to drink like any prince can. He and his companions must drink 40 barrels of wine. 
Oh, the fool was not sure about that. He couldn't even drink one glass of wine, much less 40 barrels. But thirsty drinker said, not a problem, my friend. Let them bring the barrels. And so they brought the barrels and everyone drank. And when they were all satisfied, thirsty drinker sat down and he began to drink and drink and drink and drink. And before too long, all 40 barrels of wine were completely empty. You would think, said thirsty drinker, that here at the Tsar's palace, you could get enough to satisfy any thirst. But that was barely enough to wet my throat. Hmm. It was good wine, though. The Tsar, by now, was becoming rather angry. He was sure that this peasant was doing something wrong. Was, was not, he, well, he was definitely not worthy to marry the Tsarevna. And he must be stopped. And so he thought for a bit. He said, I know he is a peasant. Therefore, he must be quite dirty and, and tired from his journeys. He must bathe before he can meet the Tsarevna. Well, the peasant fool, the fool of the world, thought that was rather nice of him. And he took his friend Straw Carrier with him. For Straw Carrier insisted that he must go along to the baths. For you see, Straw Carrier had been talking to Herol, and Herol had told Straw Carrier that he had overheard the Tsar giving orders that the bathhouse should be heated so hot that the peasant would be, be overcome by the heat and he would maybe die or become sick and go home or something, that he would go away. And so they had heated the bathhouse so hot that it was barely able for anyone to stay in there for very long. Well, the fool of the world went in with straw carrier carrying his big bundle of straw. And they sat there for a little while and the bathhouse grew hotter and hotter and hotter and very steamy. And soon it was getting a bit hard to breathe for it was that warm in there. And then Straw Carrier stood up and he scattered his straw about and instantly there was frost and snow all over the ground. And Straw Carrier and the Fool of the World climbed up with a blanket between them and the red hot stove with the frost all around them cooling off the room quite nicely. And they just laid down there and they slept on the stove that night. And the next morning, when the guards came and they unlocked the door of the bathhouse, the fool of the world came out and he said, Oh, thank goodness you have come. It was getting a little chilly in there. Well, the Tsar was very angry by this point. He thought that there was no way that the peasant could have done all those things and he needed one more, just, just one more test. He would, aha. He sent word to the fool of the world that the w wedding would happen the very next morning, but that the peasant must come with a great army to the wedding or there would not be any wedding. Well, the fool of the world went back to his friends and he said, ah, for my friends, I, I think we're going to have a problem this time. You've all helped me out so much, but this time, this time the Tsar wants me to be there with an army tomorrow morning and oh, I don't think there's anything you can do. Ha <laughs> ha. There was the laugh at the back of the group of friends and they all turned to look and there stood Wood Carrier with his bundle of sticks on his back and he said, my friend, you have forgotten about me. I can certainly help you to come up with an army by daylight. And so that night, the fool of the world and the wood carrier went into the forest and wood carrier scattered his sticks about. And suddenly an army sprang up, a very, very big army. And wood carrier said, now my friends, go back to the Tsar and show him your army and tell him that if he does not let you marry the Tsarevna today, you will conquer his kingdom. 
Well, the next morning when the Tsar woke up, he looked out the window and he saw the vast army spread out on the plain before the palace and he got a little scared. That was a very big army. It was much bigger than his army. And soon he found that the army had come with the peasant to marry the Tsarevna. And so the Tsar knew that he must do something for a man in charge of such a great army would surely be angry for all of the tests that the Tsar had given him to do. And so he sent jewels and fine clothings and silks out to the fool of the world. And the fool of the world put on the fine clothing and he gave some to his friends and they put on the fine clothing and they all went in together to the Tsar. Now, the fool of the world was quite a good looking young man and he had learned kindness and how to help other people and let other people help him from his friends. And so he was actually becoming quite wise by this time for he had never really been a fool to begin with. And when the Tsarevna came out, she met him, she thought he was rather handsome and the things he said were rather clever. And so the Tsarevna and the young man were married and people stopped calling him the fool of the world. In fact, they called him the wise man of the palace. And the Tsar gave great jobs to all of the, the young man's friends. And the wise man and the Tsarevna lived very happily together. And when the Tsar died, they ruled very happily together. And the story has been passed down through the ages of the wise man and the Tsarevna and the flying ship. And that is the story of the fool of the world and the flying ship from the Ukraine. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll come back and join us again next Friday at 3 p.m. Central Time when we'll have another story for you here from the Milledgeville Public Library of Illinois. Have a great day everyone. Bye.